trigeminal neuralgia. So that tells us there's very little, there's, there's a lot to be learned about trigeminal neuralgia, and not everybody knows about it that you may go to, okay? So let's talk about the basic um, origin of your nerve. So right between your ears is your brain stem. And your brain stem is actually the origin of where the trigeminal nerve is, okay? And what it does is it comes out, this right here, this is the brain stem, the close up. This is the nerve in blue here, the bundle, and that's the origin here. And it comes out and there's that tree or the tri of that trigeminal nerve. So some anatomy, it's kind of fun to look at it. Um, one of each of the sides of the face has the, one of the three branches, and we know that there's three branches, oclamate, maxillary, and mandibular. Now, and, this, and it actually comes out of the skull. You can see over here where these nerves come out through the skull. That's looking at the skull from the top. And so the origin, it's where it starts. The exit points are where the nerve exits the skull and enters the face. The distribution are the pathways where the nerves go in the branches. So we can see here the distribution of the nerves. Has anybody seen a picture like this before? Kind of cool, I think. <laughs> so what we have here is we have the areas of the three trigeminal nerves, the sensory distribution, okay? So some of you can relate to that pain immediately and which nerve is irritating you, okay? Now the distribution of one and two, it shows you right here, this is the nerve and it comes up and we can have, that's why we can have pain through behind the eye, this is why we can have pain at the top of your mouth. And then these, and, and it goes all into these little areas and it can even come right down into the teeth. And that's why oftentimes they think it's a dental problem when it's a trigeminal problem. Right guys, heard this before. And then the third distribution comes out and it comes down into the jaw. So our bodies are highly complex and there's a lot of little roots and shoots to this nerve. So it's really, really important to understand the anatomy as we dive into the causes and the help for them. So what's the problem? Most theories um, about TN are saying they, they focus on irritation of the nerves. Nerves are delicate and it doesn't take much pressure to damage or um, have any friction on them. So this is a really interesting study. Dr. Sue, the University of Colorado, 1975, the sciatic nerve of a rabbit attached to a light bulb, the weight of a feather, which is 10 millimeters of mercury, dropped on a nerve conduction, reduced the brightness by 50%. Removal of that dime restored the normal nerve flow. So if we have something that's irritating the trigeminal nerve, even the weight of a feather, it can reduce nerve signal by 50% and cause pain, okay? So when damaged, nerves transmit the messages um, of pain back to the brain when the messages register and we feel the effect. So the composition of a nerve, this is really important to understand too. Um, any nerve of the body is composed of thousands of nerve fibers. And the way we think of that, think of a PVC pipe. And it's filled with a thousand straws. So we've got a pipe, shown in the picture there, and it's got all these little straws in it, okay? And what happens is inside the PVC pipe where the straws are, the random of these nerves, is, uh, excuse me, the arrangement of these nerves is random, okay? Therefore, pressure on the nerve can cause different effects. So what that means is we have three types of nerves in our body. We have a sensory nerve, and that's what we feel. We have a motor nerve, and that controls your muscles. And we have an autonomic nerve that controls all your organs. So we have these three types of nerves, and they're in every single nerve fiber. But inside the arrangement of the nerve, or the PVC pipe of these straws, it's random. So you could have all your sensory ones on the outside and have mild irritation and cause a crazy amount of pain. The same person could have the same nerve compression but all their sensory ones are in the inside and they don't feel it. Isn't that fun, right? So, so that's why everybody feels things different as well. Okay, that's important whether we have nerve compression in the face or we have nerve compression in the low back. That's a universal understanding, okay? Um, so that's why pain, I think I just explained it, it's why patterns in the nerves are different even though the same nerves are affected. That's true of TN of the nerve compression or in the subcervical nerve. So now that we understand that there's pain, what can be done? Um, Painkillers to mask the messages from the damaged nerves. There's many medications currently um, were originally developed to combat epileptic seizures. Um, obviously microvascular decompression, and that's where they take the pressure off the nerve. Portion of the skull is re removed, wrapped um, the nerve in Teflon, and then they re replace the removed section of bone with a wire mesh screen to preserve the nerve's integrity. And I know you can't really see that all the way on there on the picture, but they have it at the bottom here. Maybe some of you are in this room and have had the microvascular decompression. 
So that would be one solution to trigeminal neuralgia. Um, also, there's the gamma knife approach, and that's where the gamma knife projects 201 very fine beams of gamma rays generated by radioactive cobalt through the skull and to the brain. And the dose of radiation along with one beam is too small to harm itself, but at the point where all 201 beams intersect, a very high dose of radiation can be given with little or no radiation to the surrounding tissue. That's actually from our support group. <laughs> so is there another way? So as I mentioned before, I am an upper cervical chiropractor or a NUCA chiropractor. And NUCA stands for the National Upper Cervical Chiropractic Association. There's no twisting, cracking, or popping involved with this. And we focus on the upper neck. That's what upper cervical stands for. Um, the body, there's some principles along with that. Your body is self-healing and self-regulating. Everything you need to, have to heal is actually within us. The body has the innate and born potential, excuse me, intelligence to heal. And the brain controls all the functions of, at all the times of all the cells. So we know that. Nerve transmit these signals. And where the atlas bone at the top of the neck is misaligned, transmission of these signals can be disrupted. Let me come over here and show you this. So right here, this is really important. So we've got our brain here. We've got our lower cervical spine here. And this yellow bone right there is called your atlas. And your atlas is not attached osseously to any other bone in your body. So it makes it super unique. It's the only bone in the body that's like that. All the other bones in your spine actually connect to another bone, and the atlas is more floated, free floating. Okay, there's tendons and ligaments. And if this area gets out of alignment, and the way it gets out of alignment is due to accidents, injuries, traumas over the course of our lifetime. So I'm not talking about I started having trigeminal pain and I don't know what caused it because I had no injury. I'm talking about that this could have happened 10 years ago, and we had little things that irritated it and knocked it out of place later on straw that breaks the camel's back is what we call it. So if this little atlas bone misaligns, it compresses on your brainstem. And the reason why that's important is your brainstem is where every single muscle control center for your whole body sits. It's the fuse box of how your muscles work. So if this little area here is compressed in your brainstem, or in this brainstem, it causes muscular contraction, and that's actually throughout the body. So it can pull our knock out of alignment, and ask what, guess what happens? The trigeminal nerve sits in your brainstem, starts there, the nerve shoots down into the neck and wraps back up into your face. So if you're always going to a dentist or a neurologist or whoever it is, and they don't look at your neck, and we don't see that there's a problem in your neck and we can correct the neck and take the pressure off it, that could be the answer to the problem, okay? It isn't for everybody, and we're gonna get into that in just a little bit, but we have seen that and have success with it. So that's why it's so important that we check this area, and if you have not had success, to get this area checked because it could be an atlas subluxation misalignment, okay? So let's go on here. So the principles of chiropractic, I've probably covered a lot of this. Over time, misalignments may decrease the body's ability to adapt, and this may result in symptoms. That's absolutely true. When your body's out of alignment, it, it doesn't have the ability to adapt. A more adaptable body has a more healing potential. The longer it's been there, the longer it is to heal. Upper cervical um, doctors of chiropractic detect and correct these misalignments, and the nerve signals then get through properly to their message, and over time, they heal. Um, so what do we do? I measure. We were, my office is called Precise Chiropractic, and there's a reason why it's called Precise, is I measure before and after any time in our office. We take pre and post x-rays. We measure your posture before and after, and we actually do computerized EMG scans in our office as well, and we do those before and after. So there's no guesswork. It's very, very precise, <laughs> okay? Um, and I think that's what it says. We do two options, body in state of balance or the body is shifted and moved out, and those are what we're looking for. So this would be someone that's out of alignment, so this is before adjustment. We look at posture, because posture is your window to your spine. So it can cause your head to come off balance when that atlas is out of alignment, and cause the shoulders to come off balance, and cause your hips to come off balance, and give you an illusion that you have a short leg when it's not bone on bone short leg, but the contracture deferred. And what we do is we measure this before, we adjust, and then this is what it would look like after an adjustment. The, the head's on straight, the shoulders are straight, the hips are level, and the legs are level, okay? And I have yet to really see someone that has trigeminal neuralgia pain that doesn't have other symptoms, whether it's low back pain, neck pain, shoulder pain. It, I've never seen a case like that. Um, not that I've seen everybody, but I can tell you with um, the exposure that I've had to this, to this group, through here and also the international group back in 08, I've had a lot of trigeminal patients in the office and I've yet to see that. Okay? Probably, I, I, and not to be boastful, but probably more than anybody in the state because we've had so much, so much of this. 
Um, so the explanation. When the atlas is returned back to its normal and aligned state, the paraspinal musculature of the body then relaxes and then pulls the body back into alignment. The hips will level out, the spine returns to an aligned state, and the whole body is restored. So again, there's no guesswork. We take pre and post x-rays to ensure optimal level of alignment. And once the alignment has been achieved, the patient is checked to, uh, to monitor the alignment and to keep it that way. So this is an example of pre and post x-rays. They're extremely detailed. Um, there's a lot of math, physics, and biomechanics that go into this. Um, this is an example of one. And we create a vectored analysis, and it actually is very precise. There's one of 10,000 ways that someone's spine or atlas could be out of place. And I actually measure that, and everybody that comes into the office gets their own unique adjustment. Um, so, TN and upper cervical chiropractic propose mechanisms. So there's three, three ways why when we adjust the spine that it can actually help the trigeminal nerve. One is the spinal tra trigeminal tract and lower cervical input. The second way is the blood pressure, and third is muscular tone. So I actually already explained this a little bit. So this is the pathway of pain. What happens is we have the trigeminal nerve, and what it does, this is the, it says V ganglion, so this is the trigeminal nerve, and what happens is it orients here, it goes down into your neck, again, it starts between your ears, it goes down into your neck, then it wraps up to your brain and tells your brain how to send the pain. So again, if someone has a misalignment in their neck, and that's not being checked, they will always continue to have pain, okay? So if we correct that, we've had positive results with that. So post upper cervical correction, the lower cervical vertebrae are returned to their natural alignment. Stress is relieved from the lower cervicals and corresponding neurology, and this affects the pain pathways and inputs into the brain where the pain is interpreted. So this is another cool study. This is blood pressure. Now there's a predominant theory about the, that the trigeminal nerve is rubbing on the blood vessel, right, and against the nerve surface. And that's why tri uh, microvascular decompression has been a popular option for people diagnosed with that, okay? Well, with NUCA, we're actually one of, I think we're actually the only um, chiropractic procedure that is on the WebMD. Uh, what they did is a double-blind placebo study, which is very hard to do um, because there's very little double-blind placebo studies. There's none with surgeries and none with vaccines, so just to throw that out there. So to even have this in a chiropractic world is a big deal. Um, that found that the atlas adjustment, which we do, um, lowers blood pressure. So in 2006, or excuse me, March 16, 2007, um, on WebMDs had a special chiropractic adjustment significantly lowers high blood pressure, and it was a placebo-controlled study <coughs> surgery, or excuse me, study. And what it did is they took 50 patients, divided it into two groups. Half were given their NUCA adjustments, and half were given the placebo adjustment. So I want to share with you. There's, there's a few of you guys in this room that have been to my office and have received adjustments. So you guys can probably wrap your head around this, but if you haven't been and had a NUCA adjustment, let me explain. How can you do a placebo adjustment? Well, with NUCA, there's no twisting or cracking. And we talked about that in the beginning. So it's a light pressure at the top of your neck. So someone could pretend like they're getting an adjustment and they're not, and someone cannot, or and someone can. So it's a very, very, very gentle procedure. So the amount, amount of force a person receives during their nuclear correction is the same amount of force felt when someone is taking your pulse. Okay? And due to the leverage systems, biomechanics, and centers of gravity predetermined on the x-ray, those are that, that 10,000 ways I can misalign you, not much force is required. So this is what a nuca adjustment would look like. Um, the person would lay on their side, and then this is the doctor here giving the adjustment. It's very, very simple. Um, so post x-rays were taken on all the patients in this study, and those given the actual adjustment showed the correction of the atlas was in alignment, and those given the placebo showed no change. So compared to the sham treatments, patients who had gotten the real procedure saw an average of 14 millimeter greater drop in systolic blood pressure than an average of 8 and greater drop in diastolic. The procedure had the effect on not one but two blood pressure medications given in combination. So I actually have people that come into the office that are in zero pain, but they don't want to be on blood pressure, blood pressure medication, and they come in because they want to be healthy and not be on blood pressure medication. So what's really cool is that um, not only can this potentially help trigeminal neuralgia for yourself, but you could also have lower blood pressure, and that would be another reason if we've got an engorgement on the nerve and we can lower that blood pressure and balance it out, it could take pressure off the trigeminal nerve. 
So when the statistic, this is uh, actually uh, Dr. Bell, or Dr. Backups, excuse me, said when the statistician brought me the data, I actually didn't believe it. It was way too good to be true, Backup said. The statistician said, I don't even believe it. But we checked our everything, and that's what it was. <laughs> kind of funny. So the reduction, <laughs> no. You can just WebMD Nuka, and this will come right up. It's so cool. It's really, really yeah, cool. It's like Good Morning America. It was, it's been, it's, it's, it's hot. Celebrity. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's hot. So reduction in hypertension leads to decrease in constant diameter of the blood pressure. More space is created in the area around the blood vessel once there is no longer engorgement, and the nerve has less likely of being um, contacted by the offending blood vessel. <laughs> so um, it's really neat. I, I just want to share your backstory on this. So the way that this study came up is there's Dr. DeColtz. He's in Chicago. He's a nuca chiropractor, and he has been in practice for a, a many, many years. And in Dr. DeColtz's office, he, you know, has been serving his community, and down the street is Dr. Backers. They don't know each other, okay? But what was happening was Dr. Backers is the, um, is the cardiologist, and the cardiologist kept seeing all these people coming in, and their blood pressure kept lowering and lowering and lowering, and he was like, I'm, he works with Rush Medical College. So he goes, you know, what's going on? I need to study. I'm going to go back, and I'm going to look at all these people and see what's in common. And guess what was in common? They were all seeing Dr. Dickholz. <laughs> Putting me out of business. <laughs> that's right. That's what he said. So he actually ended up sending people to Dr. Dickholz before prescribing medi um, blood pressure medications. Wow. So that's how the study actually occurred, which is absolutely phenomenal. Okay. And this was over just an eight-week period that it reduced that much. So it's not going to be sudden because for some people you'd get sick if that was well, very sudden. So let's go on here. So let's go ahead and talk about the brainstem compression and micro or muscular contraction. I talked a little bit about this too. And it says when the atlas bone is misaligned, it can compress on the brainstem area. And remember, the brainstem is where every single muscle control center for your whole body sits. So it's the fuse box of how your muscles work. So due to the dural or soft tissue attachment, there's no bony, con um, bony compression. We talked about it being a free floater. And the brainstem is home of many nuclei, and that means it's an origin of the nerve. And this is an area that controls a lot of nerves. Our breathing centers are there. That's why we have a lot of positive effect with asthma. Um, you know, the, the breathing centers, the sleep centers, the trigeminal center, I can go on and on and on. There's actually three trillion with a T nerves there, so it's a lot of stuff there. And what happens is the muscular contraction, when you're out of alignment, um, is going to be crooked when the muscles are tight. Um, and with compression, we have contraction and spasticity of many of the muscle groups, and the tightening of these muscles in the neck and facial regions may affect the trigeminal nerve as well. So this is a fun story. Um, I actually have three success stories I'm gonna be sharing with you. And I actually even have a few of them passed out. And all of these people in these success stories um, are people that we've seen recently. So I'm gonna share these with you. Um, I know you can't see all the way, so bear with me. It's going to be a little bit long in here. So this is Jay, and I just want to point out that you can't see it, but this was actually written to 23.15. So that was two weeks ago. That's pretty impressive. That's pretty close. <laughs> so I just want to share that with you. So this is Jay started precise chiropractic in June of 2014 after being referred to our office by his medical doctor. Jay had been suffering with trigeminal neuralgia, which is chronic pain condition that affects the trigeminal nerve of the face. The nerve carries sensation to your face and your brain. If you have trigeminal neuralgia, even mild stimulus to your face, such as brushing your teeth, may trigger a jolt of excruciating pain. Jay had been suffering with this for over a year prior to coming to Precise Chiropractic. Sometimes the pain was, on his right lower jaw would be so extreme that he was unable to talk or eat. On a scale of 1 to 10, Jay says the level of pain would be reached up to a 20. Jay had pre previously been described painkillers, oxycodone, and 800 milligrams of Tegretol. Jay was worried about taking these prescription pain medications because of the potential damage they could do to his liver, but he felt that he had no choice but to take them. Even though Jay was skeptical about new chiropractic, the pain was so bad that he decided to give it a try. After his second week of being under care at Precise Chiropractic, he felt a difference in his level of pain. After only three months of treatments, he was feeling so much better, he went from taking 800 milligrams of Tegretol down to 200 milligrams. And after eight months of being under care, he no longer needed to take pain medication. Jay has had so much success with Nuka, he referred his girlfriend Debbie to Precise Chiropractic. Debbie had been suffering with shoulder and neck pain as well as headaches for years prior to starting care at Precise Chiropractic. Debbie has been under care for three months and has already had a big relief of her pain. 
Jay has told dozens of people about the benefits of chiropractic. Anytime he notices someone that is sick, suffering, or in pain, he absolutely recommends that they give Nuka a try. People just don't believe, but they really need to go and see exactly how wonderful it is. It's exactly the kind of, it, it is actually kind of silly for anybody not to try it, in my personal opinion, says Jay. So this was Jay on 223.15. So let's go on to another one. So this is Joan, and Joan's been to this group before. Joan started at Precise Chiropractic in 2013 after hearing Dr. Kramer on the radio on WMUZ, your weekly checkup. I have a radio show. I've been doing it for four years. I'm on every Tuesday night on 103.5 FM from 9 to 10 at night. So if you do listen to 103.5, tune in. You can call in. It's a live call-in show. It's wonderful. A lot of fun. So please listen. So she heard me on the radio. Okay. She suffers from trigeminal neuralgia, which is a chronic pain condition that affects the trigeminal nerve in the face. This is going to be a repeat because if someone was to read this, they might not know what trigeminal is. The nerve carries sensations to your face and your brain. If you have trigeminal nerve neuralgia, even mild stimulation to your face, such as brushing your teeth or putting on makeup, may trigger a jolt of excruciating pain. Before finding Nuka, Joan suffered with trigeminal neuralgia for two years and tried other treatments such as oral gum surgery and taking medication. She did not find relief. Since coming to Precise Chiropractic, her adjustments have helped her ter tremendously. She has less pain, shorter periods of pain, and her area of pain is much smaller as well. Joan says her life has improved greatly and with Nuka. Her day, her day goes by with, excuse me, her day goes by without constant pain and she says she's able to do nearly everything she wanted to do. She loves that she's able to be more pain free time during her day. Joan says her adjustments are wonderful and there's no pain during these adjustments. With regards to her visits at Precise Chiropractic, Joan states that her staff is very friendly, very professional. She seems, she is seen quickly in the office with no waiting. Um, it, she likes to, that she gets in and out quickly so she can carry out with her day. She also gets massages in the office and says they're wonderful and relaxing. And this is 116.14. So that's when she wrote that one. But we still see Joe. Can you guys all hear me? I'm not talking too fast. Okay. And what was your radio station and uh, one time? 103.5 FM, Tuesdays from 9 p.m. to 10. Great, thank yeah. you. And you can also, uh, my website is nucainfo.com, N-U-C-C-A-I-N-F-O.com. And if you have one of these books tonight, all that information is in there. So you can see that. And you can also find us on iTunes under yourweeklycheckup.com, or your weekly checkup, and the podcasts are on there as well. Okay. Now this is great. This is Delhi. So each one of these um, that you're going to hear tonight, they're very different cases, Okay. For example, Jay, he's completely pain-free. And Joan, she's not, but she's at a much better place, okay? But it's a very much more manageable place for her. So let's hear about Deli now, okay? It says, Deli started care at Precise Chiropractic in June of 2008 after finding about our office on the internet. She was suffering from trigeminal neuralgia, which is a chronic pain condition that affects the trigeminal nerve in your face. The nerve carries sensation to your face and to your brain. If you have trigeminal neuralgia, even mild stimulation to your face, such as brushing your teeth and putting on makeup, may trigger a jolt of excruciating pain. Before finding Nuka, Deli suffered from trigeminal neuralgia for 10 years. And she had tried other treatments, such as a surgical procedure called microvascular decompression and taking a drug called Tegretol. She did not find relief with those. Um, since coming to Precise Chiropractic over five years ago, she has not been a, she has not had to use any medication, has not had a significant facial pain since starting with her adjustments. Della says life is so much better without taking Tegretol. I didn't re realize after 10 years of using a medication how it had affected me. I am now awake. Many activities such as bike riding are so much easier to do without worrying of facial pain. With regards to her visits at Precise Chiropractic, Dolly states, everybody is wonderful. It is worth the long drive to be treated here. Because we have people that come from all over to, to get the Nuka care. I will never stop scheduling my regular two or three week appointment. She credits Dr. Tramer, Kramer and Nuka for saving her life. After suffering for 10 years with trigeminal neuralgia, she's had surgery, which didn't work. She found Dr. Kramer a few months later and has been pain free ever since. Dolly does not take any supplements at the office, but has massages and says they are wonderful. And this is also 116, 2014. So we, from those cases, there's some different things you've heard, okay? So someone that's had surgery, someone that's had, or excuse me, microvascular decompression to oral surgery to medications and in between um, have found relief. And in this book, what, what I have given you guys today, if you didn't get one, we have some at the front. This is a great read as well. This is another success story of somebody with trigeminal neuralgia and how they were able to benefit from upper cervical or new care, okay? 
So what else does upper cervical chiropractic care help? Well, it affects the entire spine. I mean, it's, it's just not the trigeminal nerve. And I, I've kind of alluded to that through this with sharing my story and also hearing these other stories. Um, the correction is gentle in nature, not forceful. The most pressure a patient receives is a level given uh, just a, like someone checking your pulse. And because of the fact that individuals are, have already had surgery or hardware inserted, they can still be a candidate for care because of, there's no twisting or popping. Because I see a lot of people that have had failed neck and back surgeries as well. Um, other conditions that are helped are allergies, asthma, chronic pain, skin conditions. Arthritis is a big one. Arthritis literally just means inflammation of the joint. And osteoarthritis, is which most people have, not rheumatoid osteo, just means it's inflamed because it's been out of place for a long time. Okay? Carpal tunnel syndrome, chronic ear and sinus infections, vertigo and dizziness. That one's a winner for us. We see tons of people with dizziness and vertigo in the office. Your balance centers are at your brain stem as well. Um, disc disorders, herniated discs, uh, epilepsy and seizure disorders, fibromyalgia is a really, really, really big one. Uh, headaches, migraines, cluster headaches, insomnia, sleep disorders, irritable ball, uh, menstrual disorders, MS, pain in the neck, back, shoulders, arms, and joints, thyroid, and TMJ dysfunction are some of those. And these are actually some other websites that you can find, um, nuca.org. So if you know someone that is not in the area, um, go to nuca.org and you can send them to the doctor in Florida or the doctor in California. We get people connected all over to finding a Nuka chiropractor. But we also take care of lots of snowbirds, so we're always back and forth. Um, NukaInfo.com is actually my website, and you can read all about our offices while there and about the radio station. And then if there is no Nuka person in your area, the next best would be AtlasOrthogonality.com. Um, like some states actually don't have Nuka because there's just not a lot of us. There's only eight of us in the state that do this. Again, it's a specialty within chiropractic. So we do have people that travel in, in states that don't have NUCA. So these, this would be the next box, and then orthospinology. I actually learned them all in school because I wanted to know about all of them when I had, like I said, I this had saved my life, so I really wanted to know. But NUCA was the best and most effective for myself. And this is my information. And that is it. Very good. Let's see here. We are right on time. Um, and so the big thing tonight is I want to make sure that everybody has one of these books and then I can take any questions that you may have right now. Is it covered by insurance? Yeah, it depends on your insurance carrier and what kind of coverage you have. So. Medicare no one has to say Medicare. Yeah, Medicare reimburses and some. And if you have a supplement, that will pick up the difference. Yeah, I've got the Blue Cross supplement. Yeah, yeah. I even went and um, wrote it off like a uh, mm. medical expense and you can uh, deduct it that way too. Yeah, you can, people use health savings, flex funding. Yeah. And it, to be honest with you, when it comes to, to, to this, and we have also um, savings packages for people without insurance, and it's, it's affordable regardless. But when it comes to your health, you know, you want the best. So, hey, someone else had another question? I'm kind of confused and I don't really know how to phrase a question. Sure. I've been getting chiropractic for 40 years. And a number of years ago, I had the Atlas Orthogonal, mm -hmm. which I had a chiropractor several years ago say that that was the NUCA when I asked him what NUCA was. It's not. And yet, I saw where you were laying the patient on the side. I've been adjusted like that. And the same doctor. With their hand? Uh, with his hands, yes. Mm -hmm. And the same doctor, uh, my blood pressure was very high. And he was extremely worried. And he laid me on my side and adjusted me. He said, quote, before you stroke out on us. And then, then I, a while later, I asked him about trigeminal neuralgia, and he made a comment to me that any, and I'm not trying to be rude here, but this is what was stated and it confuses me. He said, chiropractic treatment is for nerves that come out of the spine. The trigeminal nerve comes out of your brain. So it sounds like you weren't talking to someone that was very informed in what they were talking about because that's not true. Right. <laughs> I just showed you it just not yeah, true. Yeah, I know. That's why I didn't understand it. <laughs> now this this Atlas Orthogonal where I laid on a table and you have that machine. Well, is that the same? That's thing? not Nuka. Nuka is done by hand. It's not. No. That's why I asked you if he did it by his hand, and you said yes. Okay. So um, he did it with he the didn't machine. He saw Nuka though, but he laid me on the side like you and did, did it with the machine. Though. No, no machine. Yeah. This was like. 
about 30 years ago when oh, I first yeah. had it with the machine. Yeah. <coughs> it sounds a little it sounds a little fishy. It doesn't sound like what we're doing at all. Okay. okay. Yeah, you want to you want to go with people that are on the NUCA website and they have to be going to the NUCA conferences. And oftentimes, you know, people can say that they do Atlas work or say that they think they do NUCA, but it's not. It's a lot of extra training and a lot of extra work to do. Okay. Okay. Trust me. A lot of extra schooling. And, yeah. And uh, you have to go not only for Jamie, but also the the. Of, um, zero oh, the resting chairs. room. After you're adjusted, we have room. a resting room where you sit and let the adjustment settle in, so into that place. That really, that really does help. Like does. before you get back in your car, or whatever, and you get or stressed or out again. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm sorry you had that experience, but that does not sound like NUCA. Yeah. And anybody that knows their NUCA knows where the distribution of the nerves are. It's kind That's of silly to me. It's almost laughable. But you know, it's like the same thing where you could go to one dentist and have this experience, and another dentist would have the same one. So I'm sorry you had that experience. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Would you be able to help somebody that has RSD? You know, restless leg syndrome, what do you say? It's reflex systematic dystrophy. It's a nerve disorder. I've heard my, it. I've in heard my it. knee from after I've had my surgeries. Okay. Yep, I've had one person that come in the office with that, and you know, as far as that's concerned, I don't know the answer to that until we go down through a full, you know, history and an evaluation. And I go through an evaluation process before we ever start to find out if you'd even be a good candidate. And at that point, I just say to you, you know, this is our success rate with this. Do you want to move forward? Do we want to go down that road? So I'm never going to overpromise and underdeliver at all. That's just not my. That's just not my intention. My intention is to help the people I know I can help because I only have so much time in the day too. Right. <laughs> and so that's what that's that's what we that's what we, we would do. We do a consultation with that, but it's you know not something that I see a lot of in the office. Did you want to say something, John? No. Oh, I heard you here. However, um, I'm somebody. I was in an accident when I was very very young and had one leg shorter than the other for 50 years. Right? You're the same now, and that's because of the surgery. Yeah. So it, it does work in that respect. Yeah, I had TN, I had uh, Gaminite before I found the nuca. So, but my wife has non-typical, and that has given her relief. It doesn't cure her, but it's given, it's, she isn't as sensitive to the other stimulus. And if you have a tendency to be bent over when you come out, you walk straight. <laughs> Almost guaranteed. <laughs> we do have a saying, you lift in and leap yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, like it's, it's, yeah, well, we really focus on posture. And again, this doesn't cure everything. Not one anything does. It's just right. it's just is what it is. I mean, if, if you know microvascular decompression fixed all the in the world, well, that's what everybody would do. Right? <coughs> but this is a natural approach to 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 help charge up. And that's what I'm here to share with you guys. So, and I hope we did that effectively tonight. So, first I apologize for being late. <laughs> um, are you saying that all chiropractic problems are cured through this one adjustment in the neck? Oh, so you're saying can we affect low back pain from a neck adjustment? Is that your kind of your question? Right. Yes. It's a whole body adjustment. But it's just centered on just the yeah. yeah, so, so um, Nuka looks at it as we talk <coughs> about the brainstem, right? We spend a lot of time discussing that. We all know now that at the level of the brainstem where the atlas is, is where every single muscle control center for your whole body sits. So if your atlas never gets set, you won't hold your other adjustments as well. Like, so I look at the body, if the atlas is out of place, we're going to align the whole thing as a unit thing's going to go into place because I check the whole body before and after. So we know that everything's back into alignment before you leave. And a traditional chiropractic, which helps lots of people, but they look at it as this bone's out of place, this bone's out of place, and this hip's out of place. And they'll adjust all that. But if you don't open the connection at the atlas in a very precise way, it'll never stay. At least not long term. So that's the big difference. Wow. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> it is interesting. Yeah, isn't it? it does. They actually call that the mouth of God <coughs> at that area because that's the connection to your brain. And if that has neurological compromise at that level, your brain and your body can't communicate. So there'll always be a dysfunction or a disease on that. We're still doing good on time. I think I have time for about one more question. Yeah, we're still doing pretty good on time. Okay. I was just wondering when you uh, adjust the atlas, how uh -huh. long does it stay? Do you have to come Absolutely. 
what you have to see, keep coming back. Because what we have to do is we have to train the body to hold its alignment. The longer it's been out of alignment, the longer it's going to take to stay into alignment. But through that process, people get tremendous amount of relief and increase their body's ability to heal. It's just like working out or putting braces on your teeth. You know, you, you put the braces on and it's a process to straighten it out. Or, or working out when you're getting strength training, it's a process to get nice and strong. And what we do, yeah, it, it gets stays longer and longer over periods of time. I, for example, I used to be a migraine sufferer, and I used to be on Imitrex, a migraine medication, and I used to have them all the time. And I haven't had a migraine in over a decade. I mean, I'm very, very fortunate, but I'm also very diligent with my care. So I make sure that that's that's important to me. So I make sure that I get my right <laughs> two notes too. How many new good people are there in Michigan? Now? About eight now. And there's two in my office. I didn't mention that. It's me and Dr. DeBrowney. Yeah. Okay. yeah, Dr. DeBrowney's been with us a little over a year now, a year and a half now, maybe something like that. Did your little guy get an adjustment? Oh, yeah. I adjusted him 12 hours after he was born. Oh. So. Yeah. Don't, don't misunderstand. It's not just for adults. She, she does see children even uh, like her little guy. Yeah, yeah. Children with like uh, torticollis and yeah, acid reflux, those sorts of things. Have you, ever, have you ever um, dealt with anybody that has, and I'm probably going to pronounce this wrong, Chiari? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, I have. We actually have a Chiari um, person in our office that actually is just started chiropractic school because it saved her life so much that she went to chiropractic school now. I have a young girlfriend that's actually underneath me in my oil business, my essential oil business, and she's just coming back from the East Coast from having her surgery out there. Yeah. And so she hasn't been able to find anybody in the area, so I am going to definitely pass, pass on the along. information. Yeah, and I don't accept all Chiari patients in the office, and so there's a, a kind of like a checklist I go through right. to see if they're a candidate. But I've only had to refuse or like decline a couple people over the years. I'm not so. familiar with that. What is um, it's where your brain stem actually goes down into your spine. Okay, so it actually goes down into from your skull to your spine. So those people tend to have tons of problems because we just talked about what the atlas sure. does. If that's out of alignment, compressing out your brain. So think about the base of your brain coming through. So that really affects a lot of stuff. So, but yeah, we can, we've been able to help with that. So, yeah. Well, right. if you, well, you don't have you any other very questions, much, I, Dr. Well, I just wanted to mention we, we talked about tension headaches. Oh, or, okay. Have, oh, okay. Yeah. We had one a new patient, a uh, new member that wasn't able to join us tonight, but she was getting TM pain um, that she described, like going up her scalp and then into her face. And I thought maybe it had some symptoms of uh, tension headaches. Well, so usually if they go up. up the scalp like that, it's the occipital nerve, okay? And then it can go wrap in. So the occipital nerve starts back here. And I've seen that with tri tri trimental patients a lot, that they'll have facial pain. And then at the very top of your neck, right above the atlas, so if the atlas is out there, they have these nerves that wrap up and then branch out over your head. So if the atlas is out of place there, that could also cause the tension headaches, okay? And then again, um, with that being said, even the wrapping around or the band is the muscular contraction. So does that help? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and if she watches, which I, maybe next year we need to do the video over there because I felt like I was back to the video the whole time. <laughs> but um, but, um, but uh, if she watches that, that'll help explain it all as yeah. well. Yeah, so, so yeah. So your, your nervous system, just to be really clear, does control everything in your body. It controls every muscle, every tissue, and every organ. So it doesn't control some things, it controls everything. And I'm a huge advocate, um, because obviously it saved my life, but we get our teeth checked, we get our eyes checked, we get our heart checked. But if you're not getting your nervous system checked, that's the system that controls every other system. So it's really important to make sure your body is into alignment. So not only can you get help with your trigeminal pain and other pain, your whole body functions better. I mean, we just saw the study about how this reduces blood pressure. That's only one thing. We have people that I can go on and on and on with other things that it helps with. And, you know, I did the list back here, right here, of just some symptoms. But when your whole body is connected, meaning the brain and the body are connected, we just are better. You know, people often say after their first adjustment in our office or several adjustments, I have a better sense of well-being, I feel connected, I'm sleeping better, da 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 And, and it's because all the systems are firing appropriately. So that's, that's what we do. It's, it's as simple as that. <laughs> unchoke nerves. The only way to unchoke a nerve is to unchoke a nerve. We can't give it a pill, potion, or lotion. you got to unchoke it. <laughs> so I have, like, it. I have a hard time because I'm always having ribs popping out of place, mm -hmm. and I don't do anything. Is that caused? 
maybe. I used to have a bad rib pop out of place all the time. It was from a seatbelt injury I had from an auto accident. And when I got that injected for my atlas, it actually stabilized. And I was seeing a traditional chiropractor, and I was always getting it popped, and it never stabilized yeah. because it wasn't set at the yeah. at it'll, this time. It'll be that. fine for like a few days, but then I can start feeling it. Like I know it's out right now because I can feel it in that yeah. spot in my back. And a lot of times people um, get out of alignment, and we kind of breezed over this a little bit, is accidents and injuries. So auto accidents are number one. Big time head injury. So um, anytime you had to get stitches in your chin, your forehead, your your back of your head, those really knock the, your head out of alignment. Concussions, um, sports injuries, slips and falls on the eyes, you know, and then of course um, with trigeminal, a lot of times we see that with dental procedures, where if someone goes under anesthesia and then they wake up and they're like, "Whoa, what happened?" Because your body was laid in a funny position for a long time, it could have knocked things out of alignment. So that's how it really starts. To, to get out of place and it may go away initially and then it kind of pops back up and then goes away and go the worst thing I can hear in my office is I hoped it go away well <laughs> they don't <laughs> unfortunately it will just decay and get there until we're older and wake up one morning and say man I don't know why I hurt so aging can be graceful. We all are aging every day, but we can do it more gracefully. Can you put that in writing? I'm serious. <laughs> it can be graceful. So in my opinion, you know, some suffering is optional. Yeah. So that's just. Thank you so You're much. very Thank welcome. You very Thank you. Thank you. So thanks for having me tonight, and I'm going to go home and see my little eight month old baby. Yeah. I'm <laughs> here with her essential oil company that she'd like to share a few minutes of what uh, is available and um, how it's helped her cope with pain issues and how, she, how uh, this is another natural approach to kind of fit well with our uh, chiropractic talk. If you want to talk in your seat or up here, whatever. whatever. Um, it doesn't matter. Um, I have um, recently been diagnosed with RSD, but I started using doTERRA essential oils about two years ago. Um, I've had three knee replacement surgeries, and the bad thing of that experience was I was never tested for allergies beforehand. So now um, I have a total knee replacement. I have a ceramic knee with titanium underlay, and I'm allergic to both of those components and also the cement that they used. Um, my doctor um, that did the second surgery actually was down from the Oakwood Hospital and um, he never tested me for allergies beforehand. Um, I asked him about it and he said he didn't think it was necessary. Um, if I could wear jewelry and I didn't have a problem then I probably didn't have an allergy. So, you know, Whatever, I believed him, he was the doctor. So anyways, he did the surgery. Um, probably about a week after the surgery, I still was having a lot of pain and swelling. Um, I fought that for about three weeks. Um, my third visit back to him, um, after I got to the office, I was told that he was no longer in the office. I so, had that experience before. So Where they then, kind of walk out. Yeah, you know, oh, what, do you, what do you do, you know? And I was so discouraged. Um, when you're suffering with the amount of pain that I had, which I'm sure many of you have the same amount of pain in different areas, you get depressed. Um, they loaded me up on pills, um, antidepressants, anti-inflammatories, muscle relaxers, you name it, to the point where I couldn't even function. I couldn't even get out of bed. So then uh, my girlfriend told me, you need to, you know, start seeking out another doctor to help you. So I went to another doctor and um, he told me it was all part of the healing process, what I was going through, the pain in my knee. And it got to the point where when I would walk, it sounded like a rubber band snapping. You could hear it. I'd be walking in the store and people would like turn around like, what is that? And I said, no, it's just my knee. So then about two years ago, my sister handed me this book. We call it the Oils Bible. And she says, look up some of your ailments and see, make a list of what oils, you know, match your ailment. And she says, why don't you try using them? She goes, what do you got to lose at this point? Can I zoom in on your book? Mm -hmm. So I said to her, go. I'll try it. Well, I had been on medication for two and a half years. I could take four vitamins at a time and wouldn't touch my pain. Um, some of the um, different medications they put me on were for um, 
they were antidepressants. Well, when I take an antidepressant, I have the opposite effect. It makes me hallucinate. Um, I would go to town, I'd forget what I went for, and I'd sit in the parking lot, and people I know would come up, hey, what's the matter? And it's like, I don't even know what I'm doing here. Oh, wow. So I quit the medication, cold turkey. I started reading this book, going through, making my list, and I started using the oils. I've been pain free and medication free for probably about two and a half years. I'm not completely pain free in my knee, but I'm able to function, you know. Um, it's huge. And it's just like, um, I got into this company for myself, but as I shared my story, I've been actually able to help other people control their pain, high blood pressure, just a numerous, numerous things. And um, doTERRA has a product that's called DDR Prime that's got a study done on it, and it's uh, preventative for cancer. Um, you can research it on the internet. Um, it, repel it repairs your cells as you're going through radiation and chemotherapy. Um, a lot of different hospitals now are incorporating the oils into their care. Um, it was just on the news um, this morning that um, Cape Coral Hospital in Florida is using um, lavender and some of the different oils for stroke victims, um, for people that are um, depressed. Um, Vanderbilt Hospital down in Tennessee are using the oils. So um, if any, any of you read the Bible, you know that oils were part of the biblical years, and now they're coming back into in our times. And I just think, um, I mean, it's worth taking a try to combat some of the symptoms that maybe some of you are having. And I have a lot of information in the back. Um, I brought some oils. Um, you're free to open them up and smell them. I didn't want to open them up because they bother Lynn. And um, I have some on, and I hope it's not bothering no, you. No, no, it's, it's, I think it's maybe the combination because I, I do um, I do enjoy the, the scents maybe by themselves or whatever, mm -hmm. but sometimes just, sometimes even with cooking, I don't know if anybody else has migraines, but. I do. Do you? Does that trigger, yeah. do you I get, get triggered, triggered by? Perfume. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I noticed I was listening to Rachel Ray today, and I noticed she was even talking about she was using fresh black pepper, and she was saying that because it has essential oils in it, it is all coming back. Mm -hmm. It's true, and in a lot of the cancer centers, I, I live near St. John's, uh, Maine, where they have the Van Dyke uh, Cancer Center, and that that's all holistic in there, and mm -hmm. and uh, using it for therapy. And I have a couple other stories. Um, one is per my personal experience. A year ago, I. I'm a realtor, so I'm on the road all the time. I'm rushed, I'm busy, I don't pay attention to myself. And um, I was taking a shower one morning and I felt a lump in my breast. And it scared me because my great-grandmother died of breast cancer. Um, my mother had had two or three um, precancerous lumps removed. And my sister and I suffer from fibrocystic breast. So it kind of freaked me out and I thought, well, I'm gonna get my book out. So I used the DDR Prime oil and frankincense, and I applied it to that area twice a day for a week, and it just diminished the lump that I had in there. And the first few times I used it, it was such a weird experience because I could literally feel the oil attacking that cyst or whatever it was inside my breast. And I went for a mammogram two weeks later, and it showed nothing. So, and then we also have a, um, he's actually a vet back in my area. I'm from up by Sandusky, Michigan. It's about two and a half hours from here. His wife had um, bone cancer. She was diagnosed with bone cancer in her back. And my friend is a massage therapist and she's also a wellness advocate for the doTERRA company. And she said to him, she says, what I want you to do, she says, I'm gonna give your wife a massage today and I'm gonna rub some frankincense, frankincense down her spine. She says, the next three days when she gets out of the shower, I want you to do the same thing. So she showed him you know, how she did it and he did that and when she went back for her checkup, she no longer had bone cancer. So. Wow, that's 
is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. So, um, Marion had contacted me back, oh gosh, early last fall. She had found me online somehow, and I'm glad she did, but we kind of lost our connection for a couple months, but we kind of reconnected, and I just, I want to thank her for bringing me down here because there is an alternative. You know, even, I mean, this would even benefit the chiropractic care because I see yeah, a chiropractor um, every other week, so. It goes goes with some of the, well, like all the alternative therapies, yeah. right? Yeah. They definitely help. You know, and I mean, some people, some people can can't go out for prescription medications, <laughs> but, you know, this is just an alternative to help benefit, you know, maybe what they are taking or doing yeah. in their life, so. The the chiropractic or acupuncture.
What I found interesting is I, I have a, a friend that um, she has trigeminal neuralgia and she said anytime her sinuses get blocked, she has an exacerbation of her trigeminal neuralgia pain. And if she keeps her sinuses open, she's not bothered with the pain. And Miriam was mentioning it's, was it eucalyptus? eucalyptus yeah. Peppermint. Yeah, eucalyptus and peppermint seem to really help in that way. So I know they recommend the neti pots and people use that. And, but you know, we, we have to be creative and, uh, I mean, use our heads. But we, we do need to think outside the box sometimes to come up with what works for us. Yeah, we, you know? have, a, we have an oil that's called Breathe that's beneficial for people that have allergies, um, emphysema, uh, COPD, any kind of lung issue. It just opens up the airway. So. Is it good for sinuses? Like opening up the oh, sinuses? Oh yeah, if you open like my a... bottle of Breathe and just smell it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or um, I like peppermint. the capsaicin, you know, the, or the yeah, hot, like hot foods that opens me up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Something I can taste. Yeah, run it past your doctor, obviously if you've got medical conditions, but um, you're welcome to, Beth and Marian said, to just go back and smell their different things and see what you think. Yep. All right, thank you. Thank That's you. wonderful. I have an idea that um, a lot of them are, can oh, right be used. I've got to change the uh, tape. Okay. And I love the lemon. Lemon is good for um, blood pressure and many other things. The lemon makes a great cup of tea. <laughs> Iced or hot, and I also use the peppermint uh, in peppermint tea. It makes a great cup of peppermint tea, and it also helps my sinuses. Yeah, they say if you take a cup of hot water in the morning and you and you put a drop of lemon in it, it helps get your organs functioning at the level that they should before your day even starts. Before you even eat breakfast, if you do that, it cleans your kidneys, it cleans your livers, your liver. Um, it just kind of de detoxifies and gets all the nasty stuff out that you may be breathing in just from your